Tiffany, you're crazy. What are you doing? Hey, Dr. Jeff, what are you looking at? Oh, this? This is my homemade ant farm. So that's where they grow all the ants. Not quite, Bert. An ant farm is a container people keep to study their group behavior. I don't get it. Aren't animals usually competing for food? These ants just look like they're working together like a group. That's right, guys. Animals often work together as a group in order to survive. I'm Dr. Jeff Finnecker, and today we're going to explore the science of animal group behavior. We'll look at animal group behavior, which can involve a few animals or thousands. We'll learn how animals form groups to defend themselves. And we'll explore how groups can help animals get food. Welcome to Labrakazam, where we make science make sense. So how exactly do ants demonstrate group behavior? Great question, Zoe. Like humans, ants are social animals. They work together in an organized group called a colony or an army. Animals work together to help them survive, grow, and reproduce. That's impressive. Most groups I hang out with just end up looking down at their phones. As you can see, these ants are working together in a group to build their home digging tunnels and rooms, and carrying bits of sand to the surface. Ants display incredible group behavior. Here, they're working together to form a bridge between two branches so other members of the group can cross it. And leafcutter ants work in armies of up to 10 million. They cut off large pieces of leaves and carry them back to their colony. There, the leaves are used as fertilizer to grow fungus. That fungus is used as food for the entire group. Wow, that's incredible. I'll say I can barely feed myself, let alone a whole army. Dr. Jeff, are there any other animals that live and work together like ants do? There sure are. Let's break it down. Like ants, honeybees also work in groups to build nests, reproduce, and perhaps most importantly, gather food. To feed the rest of the colony, worker bees collect nectar from plants. They store it in a separate stomach called a honey stomach until they get back to the hive. Then, the worker bees can share the nectar with baby bees called larvae and other worker bees, helping to feed the entire group. Wow, so groups can help each other survive by building shelters and gathering food. Labrakazam. Ants, bees, Seems like mostly insects work in groups. Actually, it's just the tip of the iceberg. There's lots of examples. You wanna see some more? Yeah! Uh-huh. I think that means it's time for a... Field trip! We're here on the Serengeti Plain at Bush Gardens to look at some amazing examples of animal group behavior. This is Gabe, he's an animal care specialist. I see we have wildebeest here. Tell us a little bit about them and their group behavior. Group behavior is really, really cool with wildebeest because they're known to be in such large numbers. Smaller groups could be 10 to 15, but you could find them up to 1.2 million strong in Eastern Africa at the Great Migration. What is the Great Migration? The Great Migration is a really, really important movement of many, many land mammals that go in a huge circle. Why do they do that? They're doing it eating grass. There's seasonal grass here, and there's rain up here. They're gonna go up there, eat the green grass. They're gonna move back down here, eat some green grass. So it's just a continuous cycle every single year. How far do they go? There's several estimates, but six to 800 miles round trip. And what's the reason that they make these big groups? The big groups are there mainly for safety. Uh, the more eyes looking out for predators, the better. So they do that to defend themselves? Yes, that's one of the ways they can do that. So there you have it. Animals can form groups that are really big, like millions of wildebeest, and also really small groups. Let's check out some more examples. We're here with meerkats talking about animal group behavior. Kelly's an expert on them. Kelly, I see one of them standing up like this. 
What are they doing? Well, that's exhibiting probably the most popular, well-known meerkat behavior, and that's called a sentry. That job for right now is looking around to make sure there aren't any predators coming down. And one of their major predators is birds of prey. So they're looking up and around. I don't see meerkats a lot. Where do meerkats live? Meerkats live in Africa, the Kalahari Desert. They have that fawn kind of gold color, so they kind of blend in with the desert sand and the savanna. Um, you'll see those dark markings around their eyes. That's to help them absorb that sunlight so they can see better. And then they live in burrows that they dig. What are the burrows like? So the burrows can be several feet down, about six and a half or so, and there's many different rooms, as many as 15, with many different entries and exits so that they can escape or hide from predators. How do they work together as a group when babies are born? There's an alpha male and female that give birth to up to eight pups, but usually there's only about three or four. They stay in the burrow for about three weeks, but everybody, father, siblings, everybody helps take care of them. Thanks, Kelly, that was great. Here we have a big group of over 100 flamingos. It's called a flock, and the flamingos display some very interesting group behavior. To tell us more is Bethany. How come they form groups, Bethany? With the uh, Caribbean flamingos, it's safety in numbers, but also they form flocks because they have very specialized needs from their environment. Like their food is very specialized, and they're gonna be limited to where they can find food together. So it's part necessity for finding food, but it's also to protect the flock from alligators and crocodiles and other predators. What are these different mounds? So the mounds are actually the starts of their nest. Flamingos live in really mucky, mucky, muddy water, because that's where they find the brine shrimp and the tiny crustaceans and things that they eat. So they build their nests out of the water. They form these big, like, mounds, and then they dig out a little depression in the top and they lay their egg right on top of the mound. So flamingos form groups in areas where they can find their food, and those big groups help them protect from predators, and it also helps them find mates, because they're all in the same place. That's right. Next, we're gonna look at lions and see their animal group behavior. Kelly, tell us how these lions relate to each other. Well, these lions have been together since they were just cubs, so they've been in a group situation. They know each other really well. They are the only social cats in the world. I think that's why people relate to them so well, because we see some of those same likenesses. They are very affectionate with each other. They rub up against each other, and they're very demonstrative of how they feel with each other. Right now, um, Kembe is sort of hanging around with Shatuko. She will uh, occasionally vocalize if she wants a little bit of space. Sometimes it's just the opposite. They're trying to play, and they have all those different characteristics of your cats playing at home. How does a pride work together to get food? They do hunt together, so they will creep up on their, on their prey, a stalk and strike sort of an effect, and they will chase it, but not for long periods of time, not like your cheetahs or your hyena that are built for more endurance running. What other reasons do they have to form these groups? Well, it's self-protection as well. Some of the most impactful interactions that lions have are with other lions. Male lions, when they grow up, they get ushered out of their own pride to form new pride. So typically it's two to three young lions that will leave. They're either brothers or cousins. They'll go to find a pride of their own. So there you have it. Lions work together in groups to hunt, to find mates, and for safety. Those are some pretty amazing animals. But what about group behavior in our daily lives? For that, let's check it out with some real world science. Ever look up in the sky and see this? It's a flock of geese flying in their famous bee formation. But why do they do this? This type of animal group behavior helps them conserve energy. Each goose flies slightly above the one in front of it, which reduces wind resistance. The geese also take turns being at the front of the V, moving to the back when they get tired. Schools of fish are an example of group behavior for survival. Fish traveling in large numbers are much less likely to be eaten by a predator. So much less that nearly 80% of known fish swim in schools in order to survive. People also use group behavior, like when bicyclists ride in a group to lessen wind resistance. Similar to the geese, each cyclist creates a pocket of air behind them as they ride, allowing the rider behind them to use less energy as they keep up with the group. 
We see human group behavior every day, from people huddling to stay warm, working together to build shelters, or coming together to rescue people from danger or disasters. It's truly amazing what can be accomplished when we put our heads together and work as a group. Now, let's see what Zoe's up to. Today, I'm going to show you how to explore animal group behavior at home by making your very own ant farm. To start, you'll need two clear containers with lids, one large and one small enough to fit inside the other container. Sand, a barbecue skewer, water, an apple, and a tube of ants, which you can order online for only a few dollars. First, fasten the lid on the smaller container and place it inside the larger one. Next, fill in the spaces between the containers with sand, at least three quarters of the way to the top, but not all the way. Now, take your barbecue skewer and use the end to poke a few tunnels along the end of the container. This will give your ants a head start on digging their tunnels. Before placing the ants into your ant farm, put the tube into the refrigerator for a few minutes. This will slow the ants down and reduce any chance of stinging. Now you're ready to take your ants and place them into the container. Add food like an apple slice and water. Over time, ants will work together to dig the tunnels. Look through the container to observe animal group behavior, like the ants carrying bits of sand to the top. What other factors might affect their behavior? Feel free to experiment. Try it yourself. Thanks, Zoe. Now, let's review. Today, we learned that animals form groups in order to defend themselves. Animals also form groups to help each other get food. And groups can range from only a few animals to thousands. Hey, Dr. Jeff, are you OK? The, uh, the lid was off when the ants are gone. Ants in your pants? Yeah. Let's dance. <laughs> OK. Join us next time on Labrakas Sam. <laughs> I'm Dr. Jeff. I'm Izzy. I'm Zoe. Remember, always, always question, always wonder. wonder. <laughs> <laughs>